pine needle tea. Made it myself. Good evening. Um, this is just going to be a very quick video <laughs> addressing this thing about the 144,000. Okay? What you see before you is the Jehovah's Witnesses nonsense. Okay? But before we get to any of this, Proverbs chapter 5, verses 3 and verse 13. Yea, hath God said. Hmm. Proverbs 5, 3 and verse 13. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Constantly changing, doing this one thing and then the other, constantly change. Okay. <clears throat> Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, <laughs> and come not nigh the door of her house. Why, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor incline mine ear to them that instructed me. Her ways are always movable. And of course, when you look into the J-Hos, they did, you know, they, they're flip-floppers, okay? They've changed their doctrine about the um, blood transfusion and stuff like that. Um, they're just another daughter of the whore, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, okay? Roman Catholicism, all right? And of course, Proverbs 7, verses 4 and verse 11. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. Again, the fear of the Lord, comparable unto a woman, a beautiful woman, an understanding which is departing from evil, okay? That they may keep thee from the strange woman. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Rome, and all her whorish daughters, and all those ministers of righteousness, those who have those... Uh, the ministers of Satan who transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness. Yeah. From the strange woman, that's from this, from, eh, let me read that again, but pardon. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. A lot of these servants of Satan will use flattery. Absolutely. For at the window of my house I looked through my casing. And I beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. We're reading on verse 12, excuse me. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Every, lieth, lieth in wait at every corner. Like church buildings. Okay? And in Proverbs chapter 4, one of my favorites, one of my favorite of the Proverbs. Verses 23 on to verse 27. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left, Remove thy foot from evil, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. 
but broad be the way that leadeth unto destruction. And a whole lot are those who find that. Okay? So, the 144,000 thing. Now, most of you are aware of what the Jehovah's uh, talk about this, and we're just going to touch on this briefly, okay? you got to remember the Jehovah's Witnesses, they do not believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father. They, they think that Jesus Christ is the Archangel Michael or whatever, okay? All right? Uh, I have been corrected by Jehovah's Witnesses before. Uh, before when I used to use the term Christian, I was we're not Christians, we're Jehovah's Witnesses. But there have been some of the brethren who have encountered Jehovah's who did refer to themselves as Christians. See, their ways are movable that thou canst not know them. They'll pl put on any facade in order to gain the confidences. You know, you, you run into the Jehovah's outside your door and you see their women. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, they wear dresses, they dress like ladies, but they always seem to pick the best-looking ones, don't they? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Uh, verse 10, And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. But let's, let's look a little at this here. Okay? Links for these these things will be for you in the description box if you want to look at them yourselves. <laughs> these are the J-Hodes. Now remember, God selects a limited number of faithful Christians who after their death will be resurrected to life in heaven. And they have 1 Peter 3 and 1 Peter 1, uh, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Okay? Once they have been chosen, they must continue to main, maintain a Christian standard of faith and conduct in order not to be disqualified from receiving their heavenly inheritance. And they have Ephesians 5. And remember, the Jehovah's do not use the authorized version of the scriptures. They have their own version, okay? All right? But here's the thing. The 144,000 are sealed, okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble, they are eternally secure. Okay? They are the only ones that are. Okay? But more on that in a minute. Just wanted to go through this with uh, what the Jehos say. Because most people understand this is what the Jehos teach. And see, the Jehos doing, going out there doing door-to-door -door and doing sending you things in the mail and whatnot, they're earning their way to heaven. Works salvationists. Like so many people seem to be, okay? Remember, when you encounter a Jeho going door to door and stuff like that, remember, they're earning their salvation, okay? That's what they're taught in their little watchtower, whatever nonsensical things, okay? <laughs> what will those who go to heaven do there? They will serve alongside Jesus as king, as priests and priests for a thousand years. Revelation 5, 9, 10 and 10, 20 and 6. They will form the new heavens or a heavenly government that will rule over the new earth or earthly society. These heavenly rulers will help restore mankind to the righteous conditions that God originally intended. Okay? The if, links for this will be in the description box for you. Okay? How many will be resurrected to heaven? This is a result of not rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? The time of that seven-year period, the uh, book of Revelation, it is called in the scriptures the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. You read about that in Jeremiah chapter 31. Go there. Jeremiah chapter 31, okay? Jeremiah chapter 31. I believe it is in 31, but pardon, I'm getting there. Jeremiah chapter 31. Uh, uh, let me see. Or is it Jeremiah 30? Or is it Jeremiah 30? Let me see. Ah, yes, excuse me. Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30, verses 4 on to verse 7. 
And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jacob's trouble. Now heretics will come to this and say, well, it's one day. It's one day only. It already happened. Yea, hath God said, Catholic? Yeah. Yeah. Jacob's trouble. It already happened. It's just one day. Nonsense. Okay, that's, yea, hath God said. Okay, someone who comes to this and tries to twist that, they're either ignorant or servant of the Vatican. That's the only things they are, okay? It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel, okay? The seven-year period, Daniel's 70th week, okay, that seven-year period is for Israel, okay? That's what it's about. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? The Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, will not be on the earth during that time. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? But here, the Bible <laughs> indicates that 144,000 people will be resurrected to heavenly life. Revelation chapter 7, 4. In the vision recorded at Revelation 14, 1 through 3, the Apostle John saw the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000. In this vision, the Lamb represents the resurrected Jesus. Mount Zion represents the exalted position of Jesus. <laughs> and the 144,000 who rule with him in the heavens. Ay, ay, ay. Those who are called and chosen to rule with Christ in the kingdom are referred to as a little flock. This shows that they would be relatively few in comparison with the complete number of Jesus' sheep. Okay? And like I said, links for this will be in the description box. Okay. Misconceptions. Okay? Alright. Like I said, uh, even even coadjutors will be like, yeah, the J-Hos are, um, are devils, yeah. Links for this will be in the description box for you, okay? This site exactly, so if you want to look at it, go ahead. But that is what the j -Hos basically adhere to with the 144,000, that they are working, that they might be one of the 144,000, and you heard it right from uh, the horse's rear end there. Now, here, here's another one of the, here's a protestant, okay? And this is where it gets kind of um, irritating. Oh, oh, no, I'll forget that. Uh, OBS. <laughs> there we go. All right. Interact. Now, who are the 144,000 in Revelation? And this nitwit is Kevin D. Young. And this was written on January 17, 2012. Link for this will be in the description box. Uh, <laughs> yay, half God said. I'm sure this guy paid $100,000 for his piece of paper on the wall. Hmm. Anyway, now check this out. Check this out. Check how this guy does this. This is supposedly a protestant. I haven't really looked into this that much, but check out what this guy says. Okay? Alright? Who are the 144,000? And I heard the number of the seal. Sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel, Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. Okay, let's go to Revelation chapter 7, okay? Now, <clears throat> beginning at verse 1, we will be reading uh, on 2 verse 8, okay? Now, first of all, before we get any further... The book of Revelation is doctrinally not written for us today. It is written for the Jewish people that will be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? All right? Um, some believe that there will be no Gentiles saved during the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble is for Israel. Not for the purification of the church, Catholic. Okay? But 
In Revelation chapter 4, 1, after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and Jesus Christ, he is the door, okay? And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which, say, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. That is the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? That is the redemption, that's the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? And this thing about a seal, okay? And it's not the cute little animal that people bash on the head with little billy clubs, okay? The seal, sealed with the king, king's signet. You know, they would drop wax and then they would have a ring and they'd, they'd seal, okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The redemption of the purchased possession erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? That's it. Okay? Once you're sealed, you're sealed. You cannot become unsealed. Okay, and heretics will take, well, the seals, the seven seals, that, that's something totally different. It's not talk, it has nothing to do with Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 to 14, okay? You have to understand that, okay? And Ephesians 4, verse 30. Ephesians 4, 29 and 30. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. That, um, conditional security as they say that uh, the trumpets and the seals are happening today that the 144,000 are on the earth today more than in a bit okay let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth communication that is contrary to the doctrine for salvation today okay but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? You come to the Lord on his terms. He seals you. You are once saved, always saved. You cannot unseal yourself. Okay? And God, if he unsealed you during this dispensation today, then he would be a liar, wouldn't he? And he is not. Let God be true and every man a liar. Okay? See, when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name. And see, saved people understand that. Devils don't get it. They always put, oh, you're saying step one, step two, step one. No, no. See, you say that because you've never been broken of your self-righteousness. You've never been brought to your end. Okay? That's why you say that, you devil. Those of us saints who are saved, we, you know what I'm talking about. We can explain this to you lost people, but you don't want to get it because you're still self-righteous, see? Okay? All right? So the seal, the seal, okay? Here, today, in this dispensation, unlike other dispensations before, when you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you, he seals you with himself. Once saved, always saved. Okay? You can also tie this in with John chapter 10. Okay? You're once saved, always saved. Sealed unto the day of redemption. Anyone who wants to um, refute that is either a novice, ignorant, or a Jesuit devil coadjutor working for the Vatican. Or just the devil in general. Okay? You have to understand that. You're truly, genuinely saved, born again, converted, a saint of the Church of the Living God. You are once saved, always saved. Deal with it. Okay? But, now we go to Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 8. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. 
Now you read about something similar in Ezekiel chapter 9, okay? But this, right here, specifically what we are dealing with, is talking about 144,000 Hebraic Jews sealed, okay? Sealed in their foreheads. Sealed. You read about that, read this on your own time. Ezekiel chapter 9. We may read it here tonight as well, okay? But this is, happens, number one, in the time of Jacob's trouble, and number two, after the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? All right? So the 144,000 Hebraic Jews actually get sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? They are not walking around today and already sealed in this method, which is a different dispensation. Here's the thing about that. Here's the thing. Could the 144,000 be around today? Let's say the redemption of the purchase possession happens tomorrow, okay? Then you know it's a seven year span before the Lord comes back. You won't know the day nor the hour, okay? But there will be a seven year period, okay? So if the redemption happens tomorrow, some of the 144,000, are they alive today? In Okay, yes. Are they aware that they are the 144,000? No. 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 It, it's right here in front of you, you wicked heretic. Okay? The 144,000 are sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? They are not walking around conscious of that they are part of the 144,000. That's insanity. I've heard that before, and I saw that by checking out, uh, never mind. But, okay, the 144,000, okay, are, one, are they alive today if the redemption happens tomorrow? Okay, yeah, because you'll have a seven-year period. Here's the thing. Do they know that they are the 144,000 determined to be sealed during the time? No. 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 Let's read. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed in 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. They're Jews. They're Hebrews. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Assyr were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Where is Dan and Ephraim? Hmm? Dan and Ephraim. You read about what happened with Dan in the book of Judges. And this, this Putz mentions that. Okay? I believe that has something to do why Dan is not mentioned here in the book of Revelation chapter 7 about the 144,000. Ephraim also. The whole, read the whole book of Hosea. Okay? And then you'll get the picture of why perhaps Ephraim is not mentioned here. Okay? So here's the thing. Okay? Now let's read. Alright? On to verse... Oh, ten. After this I behold, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. Okay? And let's keep reading, because see, this great multitude is different than the 144,000. This great multitude are those who were killed right after the redemption of the purchased possession. Because remember, a lot of these Christians who just believe and receive, who get left behind, a lot of them, I do believe, are going to realize it's like, wow, we've been lied to. The redemption of the purchased possession was all along, and we've missed it. And then when that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed, those Christians that get left behind are going to be like, hey, but then again, that man of sin, he's going to kill them out right away because he's going to be, I believe, turning his attention to the sons of Ishmael to make a common enemy to get the world behind him 
to help the Jews. And remember, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Hebrew. Okay, you read about that in the book of Daniel. Okay? And cried with a loud voice, verse 10, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell down and fell down and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now see, so you got to remember, this is during the time of Jacob's trouble. The redemption of the purchased possession had already happened. Okay, the, that's us saints of the Church of the Living God who are saved, born again, converted, once saved, always saved. We go up. Then this time happens. This during this time period, it is faith and works similar to as under the law. Okay, so in here, verse fourteen, they went through great tribulation. I personally believe that that is talking about when we get caught up. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, these Christians who say, you know, who don't believe in the redemption of the purchased possession, the doctrine of the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? There are those who are deceived, willfully deceived, also stupid, who are going to realize, oh no, we missed the redemption of the purchased possession. Those crazy guys who held to the authorized version of the scriptures, okay, they were right. Why are we right? Because the book is right. Okay? They're going to realize we done missed it. Like I told you, there are a lot of these poor Christians who are going to be left behind. Okay? They're going to wake up. By then it's going to be too late. And it's going to cost them their lives. Okay? You understand? So, this is not a result of the tri uh, of the um, of the dispensation that is today, because that ends with the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay. Verse fifteen. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple, and He that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe all shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So see, there is a distinction between the sealed 144,000 Jews and the rest, which are obviously from what? Of all nations and kindreds and people. These are going to be the people that get left behind and going to reckon. Because remember, there are millions of Christians. The very few saints of the church and living God who are going to be redeemed, caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. What's going to happen to all those Christians who get left behind? I believe a majority of them who are being duped by a small few, okay? A small few of these devils are the ones who are poisoning all these stupid Christians. And I say that in charity because, see, once you guys get left behind, you're going to realize that you were lied to. And you have every right to be angry. But then you are going to see that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. And then you're going to be like, hey, hey. And then that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to have you killed really quickly. So quick that it's not even going to be a blip on his radar. Because he's got bigger things. And he has but a short time. Okay? Alright? But there's a distinction between the 144,000 and those who were already slain. Do you see that? Don't look at me. Do you see that in verse 9? Okay? That is a reference unto those that were already slain. Okay? A great multitude. Okay? Alright? And then in Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 on verse 3. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of great thunder. And I forget where that is in the scripture where the Lord where the Lord speaks and he says, 
this voice wasn't for me but for your sakes and the disciples heard the voice but others heard that it thundered okay okay we saints when we hear come up hither we're going to hear all i believe we're going to hear all of our names called like that and we're going to go up hither but the lost world is going to hear a thunder because they're, they're lost okay and i heard the voice of, and i heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder and i heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Yes, they were redeemed during the time of Jacob's trouble. They're not walking around today already destined to be the 144,000. The redeemed of the from the earth we see here, okay, and they are actually sealed in Revelation chapter 7. Okay? Meaning the 144,000 are not walking around today predetermined, as it were, already in the book of Revelation. Okay? Okay? They don't know the, the 144,000. It happens during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? All right? But now check this out. Now, this, in this twit, this twit, he tells the truth at first. But then he does his, yea, hath God said just like so many of these devils do. Now look, many sincere Bible-believing Christians would understand that the 144,000 would understand the 144,000 like this. The body of Christ, the church, is caught up prior to the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes. Yes. He, uh, you'll see this in the link. Uh, he used that word rapture and great tribulation. Uh, the great the great tribulation does not appear in scripture nor does rapture okay it's the redemption of the purchased possession the time of Jacob's trouble okay the body of Christ is caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble during the time when the, the body of Christ the church is gone a remnant of party of uh, 144,000 ethnic Jews is converted 12,000 from each tribe these Jewish converts in turn evangelize the Gentiles. There's really not that much proof of that. Is that a possibility? Yes. But see, in Revelation chapter 7, there's a distinction between verse 8 and verse 4. The ones of the great people were already gone and had great, well, were given uh, white robes. Okay? Okay? It's not, it's not, <laughs> come on. Okay, okay, all right. They wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb, okay? <laughs> all right, these are those that were murdered. All right, there's a distinction here. But anyway, these Jewish converts in turn evangelize the Gentiles who make up the great multitude in white robes in verse 9. That's one understanding of Revelation 7. That's the true scriptural understanding that's the truth a lot of godly people hold that understanding let me explain why I understand 144,000 differently yea hath God said the 144,000 are not ethnic Jewish remnant <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and you know about verse 14 here um, people will argue well great tribulation it doesn't mean they were killed um, he's going forth conquering and to conquer that man of sin the son of perdition Christians who get left behind are going to rightly at first say hey that's the man of sin the son of perdition and he's got to get rid of those guys because, like I said, I believe that he's going to target the sons of Ishmael to get the whole world. It's not going to be the Christians because the Christians are going to be in his pocket. And I do believe that there are going to be Christians during the time of Jacob's trouble. I do believe that those who affix themselves onto that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to call them Christians. You who get left behind, you watch. 
You watch. You'll see. I do believe that. I do believe that that man of sin will refer to his people as Christians. And he's going to be another Christ. He is going to be Antichrist, remember? Okay? But people will go to 14. It's like, that doesn't prove. You can't prove that that means that they're dead. Yeah, have God said, buddy? You're going to go to the Greek? Do you know that in the Greek, which one? Do you know that Satan, the most messed with book in the entirety of Scripture, is the book of Revelation? Hmm? Yeah, go figure. Okay? But it's, it's Hebrews, Jews. The 144,000 are not an ethnic Jewish remnant and certainly not an anointed class of saints who became Jehovah's Witnesses before 1935. Now he's talking about the Jehovah thing, which we looked at, and that's true, yes. The 144,000 represent the entire community of the redeemed. No, they don't! No, they don't! Let me give you several reasons for making this claim. First, in chapter 13, we read that Satan seals all his followers. Yeah, you're talking about the mark of the beast, you idiot. Hebrews are going to take the mark of the beast. Some of them will, yes. Okay? So it makes sense that God would seal all his people, not just the Jews. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. What a weak argument that is. Okay? What? Yes, he seals his 144,000 ethnic Jews. This, whatever this guy, well, what was this, what's his name again? Uh, Kevin D. Young? Jesuit coadjutor scoundrel scumbag? Lord rebuke you, you lying devil. Okay? Second, the image of sealing comes from Ezekiel 9, where the seal on the foreheads marks out two groups of people, idolaters and non-idolaters. It would seem that the sealing of the 144,000 makes a similar distinction based on who worships God, not God, not who among the Jewish remnant worship God. Okay? And talking about Ezekiel chapter 9, you read that on your own time, okay? Yes, he sealed those who wept over what was going on. Yes, okay? But then again, if you're going to make that comparison, uh, hey, genius, they were all Hebraic Jews. Ethnic Jews. Okay? Third, the 144,000 are called the servants of God, of our God, in verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the seal nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. That is true. There is no reason to make the 144 any more restricted than that. Dude, dude, they're from the tribes. They are ethnic Jews. Hebrews. Okay? This guy is this this is a bad argument. Okay? This anyone who reads the scripture, and I'm sure this guy isn't using the scripture. Okay, but I mean, come on, this is stupid. Okay? If you are a servant of the living God, you are one of the hundred and forty. <laughs> um, hey Jack. Now this also points to this guy is obviously does not believe the scriptural doctrine of the redemption of the purchased possession. Obviously. Okay? Uh, now wait, this you know, our Lord is specific. He is exclusive. You read about the making of the ark. You read about the making of the um, um, the tabernacle of testimony very specific to the measurements, the stitching and everything. Our God is very specific. Okay? Check this out. Check this out. In Revelation, the phrase servants of God always refers to all of God's redeemed people. Not just an ethnic Jewish remnant. Okay? And he's mentioning for uh, 1 through uh, Revelation 1, okay? And Revelation 2, okay? Uh, those are types of people as well, okay, in the book of Revelation. Uh, the seven churches that are mentioned there, those are also types of people, okay? All right? But none, nonetheless, nonetheless, in the book of Revelation, the redemption happens in chapter 4, okay? 
All right. This this is nonsense. This is nonsense. Okay. Fourth, the hundred forty-four thousand mentioned later in chapter fourteen are those who have been redeemed from the earth. Yes, genius, because they were sealed here in chapter seven. They were redeemed out of the time of Jacob's trouble. They were chosen during the time of Jacob's trouble, not the Calvinistic elected today. Okay? All right? Uh, and those who were purchased from among men. This is generic everybody kind of language. No, it isn't. This, 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 uh. 144,000 is a symbol. Ah, there we go. Symbolic. Catholics tell you that a lot of the book of Revelation already happened and that it's symbolic. Okay? But yet they say the Lord's Supper is literal when that's symbolic. Go figure, Catholics. They're Satan's church, of course. Okay? The 144,000 is a symbolic number of redeemed, drawn from all people. It is just the Jews, you idiot. Besides, if the number is not symbolic, then what do we do with Revelation 14.4, which describes 144,000 as those who have not defiled themselves with women? Are we to think that the 144,000 refers to a chosen group of celibate Jewish men? That's what the scripture says. That's what the scripture says. And besides, okay, besides that, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to come on having the visage, I believe, of the Roman Catholic Jesus. He's going to be a Hebrew. He's going to uh, make way so that the third temple can be rebuilt, having the deep pockets of the Vatican. The Christians, the great number here, that went through great tribulation, they were killed and stuff like that, okay? Like I said, people, and I've run into this with uh, correspondence. It doesn't, like, that. certain people would say, you can't prove, okay, Jack, you you go, uh, go along and keep thinking that you got to earn your salvation and that Jesus is an omniscient, you stupid twit. But, but, okay, all right, that they were not defiled with, that they were not defiled with women. You got to remember, that man of sin, son of perdition, is going to allow the Jewish people to reinstitute the scriptural sacrificial system of the law. Okay? All right? And Paul even talks about it's better for a man not to touch a woman. So, yes, the 144,000 are going to be celibate Hebrews. That's what the scriptures say. Okay? It makes more sense, yea, hath God said, to realize that the 144,000 is a symbolic number that is described as celibate men to highlight the group's moral pitch. That's so Jesuit right there. And separateness for spiritual battle. Fifth, the last reason for thinking that the 144,000 is the entire community of the redeemed is because of the highly stylized list of tribes and verses five and eight. The number itself is stylized. It is not to be. <laughs> not everything in the scripture is to be taken literally. For example, am I going to literally be pouring hot coals of fire on someone's head? No. No. When you do good to your enemies who would beat you with a baseball bat and run you over, by showing them love, by telling them the truth from Scripture, that's the equivalent, okay? But 144,000, 12,000 of every tribe, that's not generic, that's specific. That's, spe excuse me, specific. Again, you look at the tabernacle of witness in the, um, the uh, tabernacle of testimony, excuse me, in Exodus, about the ark, okay? God is very descriptive and specific, okay? All right? When it comes to this, it is to be literal because it is literal. Okay? All right? Nonsense. <clears throat> okay. Yes. 
It is not to be taken literally. It's 12 times 12 times 1,000. 12 being the number of completion for God's people representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And yes, yes. And 1,000 being a generic number suggesting a great multitude. So 144,000 is a way of saying all of God's people under the Old and New Covenant. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, this, this, this is... This is horse manure. Okay? This is... Never mind. And then look at the list of the tribes. There are over a dozen different ar arrangements of the 12 tribes in the Bible. This one is unique among all those. Judah is listed first because Jesus was from, was from there as a lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Not as a lion. Note that. Okay? All 12 of Jacob's sons are listed, including Levi, who usually wasn't because he didn't inherit any land except for one. Manasseh, Joseph's son, Jacob's grandson, is listed in place of Dan. So why not Dan? Dan was left out in order to point to the purity of the redeemed church from early in Israel's history. Dan was the center of idolatry for the kingdom, Judges 1830 through 31. Yes, and that's true about Dan, but see, this guy, I bet you, he, if you were to ask him, he would say that, you know, it's faith alone from Genesis. This guy isn't rightly dividing the word of truth. And when you don't rightly divide the word of truth, this is what happens. Okay? During the days of the divided kingdom, Dan was one of the two centers for idolatry. That is true. And there is, a re and there is recorded in some non-biblical Jewish writings that the Jews thought the Antichrist would come out of Dan based on Genesis 49, 17. The bottom line is that the number and the list and the order of the tribes are all stylized to depict the totality of God's pure and perfectly redeemed servants from all time <laughs> over all the earth. That's what Revelation means, but no, it does not. No, it does not, and that's thankful. This, who is this idiot again? Who is this idiot? Kevin D. Young, the Lord rebuke you. No, it is as it says it is. The 144,000 are actual Jews redeemed from among men during the time of Jacob's trouble. During the time of Jacob's trouble, they are the only ones sealed. Okay? They are the only ones. All right? The 144,000 are not walking around today. They're chosen and sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Are they predetermined today? Because if the redemption, you said yourself, right? If the redemption happens today, then they would, yeah, but see, they themselves don't know that. They get, the point is, they get chosen during the time of Jacob's trouble, and that's when they get sealed. Okay? Listen, people. You, you notice a lot of these um, go to Second Corinthians chapter. Where is that? Not First Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. <clears throat> Verses thirteen on to verse fifteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. There is no, there, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Hmm. And think about that. Perhaps at the great white throne. Okay. This guy is college educated. I'm sure he uses all the fancy schmancy lingo and dialect of a Jesuit trained cemeterian. Um, yea hath God said. He, I'm sure he would go to the Greek. I'm sure if anything he'd say well this is the best we got but it's not perfect. People. 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 Why is Satan so concerned about the book of Revelation? See if he can deceive people now and when they go and they get left behind possibility to find those who are going to serve him during the time of Jacob's trouble. But then again, we just saw that there's a multitude that are killed, okay? 
okay? Like, I, I could just see that idiot. It's like, you can't prove that. Oh, shut up, dude. Shut up. You go to hell, okay? Okay, time's wasting, all right? The 144,000 are ethnic Jews chosen and sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? All right? They're not walking around today knowing that they are part of this 140. That is heresy. Okay? And what this, this jumbled nonsense, this, this is just garbage. If this was printed out, I wouldn't even wipe betwixt my buttocks with this. So, that that's going to be it for this little video. Just wanted to make this for you. Um, you know, brethren, people, um, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And yes, we are to study the scriptures, yes. But you got to remember, saints, those of us who are saved, we are not going to be going through that time. Okay? We are not. A lot of that is yet to happen. Just remember that. That's why we want to warn people today to not, so they don't go through a time period that isn't meant for them anyway. Okay? So, that's going to be it for this little video. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching this if you do. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.